but this time we are going to see how we can create our own array list okay and we can use it inside our program so the first thing okay we will go for defining a new class okay, which is called student and that class will take inside user defined okay this is a user defined class a student and we will thereafter utilize our error error list inside uh, I mean using the class student okay so the built-in class will help us as a array error list to utilize program functionality okay let's see how does it work then you can understand better so let's go for this one so in this program okay as you can see we have imported uh, some of the utility okay, error list so this is an important factor if you don't import error list package inside the Java program the program will not run so that's why we are importing java.util error list and this is from the page number 17 of your lab manual so about the error list of user defined class object so now we are uh, creating a class in java which is called student this one and uh, student class okay is user defined class means we are creating this class this is not built in inside the java program so let's see how does it work so thereafter okay uh, at line number eight we started the definition of the class with the class keyword then student and thereafter okay in the line number nine we are going to take some of the data okay the properties of this class okay uh, so for example at line number nine we are creating an a variable actually okay? uh, that is called roll number so this is the first variable of integer type so creating the first variable integer type roll number this one in the line number 10 we are okay, declaring another variable name okay, this one with the string type line number 11 okay we'll go for the third variable of integer type which is called h so this class has three okay variables roll numbers name and age so uh, with different types integer string and integer type respectively thereafter in line number 13 okay we are going to create a method okay which is public method student uh, that method is in fact the instance of class means generator of the object so we are now uh, in the position to see okay how the objects are created from class student so now this is a generator method which will generate the object of the class so public student okay the object will be student of student class so this one okay public student and then we are taking inside okay input as three parameters arguments number one roll number of integer type number two we are taking the variable name as string type number three variable is age which is also of integer type so these three variables will be inserted by the user okay and thereafter okay it will map out all those variables with the existing okay internal data of the class so here okay we are going for uh, this keyword this is a reference to the object itself so it is a self-reference object so this will okay reference to the object okay, the student and we are okay taking out the method of this object means we are taking out the 
student objects okay? uh, roll number method so this dot roll number will go for the roll number this one so this one is this dot roll number will be equal to this one will be equal to the roll number which is accepted by the user so they are equal this dot roll number of this one will be equal to the roll number which is input by the user okay this one so this dot roll number is equal to roll number in the same way in line number 15 this dot name is equal to name and this dot age this one is equal to age this age okay so this is how the program have built in internal data this one okay, property and also the method that will generate an object of the student so let's run this so if you wish we can go for here also at the same time okay so now the process will start building this okay no problem so as you can see we have successfully built the program I means there's no error inside this program so let's move to the next step so we have built this program and even if okay after building we cannot run the program because there's no, no main function so this is the reason why we cannot run this program but this program will help to the next program okay so that program is actually the error list okay? so public class error list this is the, this one because we are taking now the utilization of the student class okay as an object so we are creating the object of the student in this class and using those objects we are running this program so let's see how does it work this is the program which is available in your lab manual page 80 okay on the lab manual you will find in page number 80 okay the same program so let's see what this program will do for you so as okay it will import java utility dot analyst okay, package and this will be utilized okay, in creation of the objects so okay uh, this is the very common way after that okay now at line number seven we are going to create a class okay, error list and I have named a little different okay so error list 22 okay so so that it can be considered as a new class so public class error list okay, 23 so you can name as you like that's okay thereafter okay we are going for the main okay method here at line number eight so at line number eight we are okay, defining the main function and here okay uh, we are creating user defined class objects one by one so line number 10 we are okay utilizing the student class okay, this class student class inside our program so student okay as you know is a class and it can generate objects okay it can instance so it can instantiate the class means it will create the objects which are needed for this program so the student I think is the class and we are now creating object s1 so the name of the object is s1 let's say the student s1 is a new object of the student type having the values uh, if you can remember this is integer type this is string type and this is the integer type so this one is roll number this one is the name of the student and this one is the age so these three parameters have been passed out here if you can remember the same thing so in the object student we can 
put inside we can input these three values so the user will put these three values and the object s1 will be created in the line number 11 okay we have the similar okay, class uh, creation but there's another class okay uh, sorry there's another object not the class actually so there's another object okay? so the object name is s2 this one so in the line number we are creating another object of a student type with different inputs okay? this one also we are going for in the line number 12 we are getting the third object okay, with a of a student type class with okay, these values for the variables. Right? Now let's see uh, how does it work further. So in the line number 14, okay, we are going to create a new error list. Actually, it is a list okay, type because we are instantiating, okay, uh, we are importing the package error list. And from here, okay, uh, of student type, okay, error list of student type. And the name of the okay, array list is list, okay, simply list. So we are okay, creating error list with a type error list this one uh, with the built-in uh, uh, student type actually okay so student type okay error list okay this one so list is the name for the student type error list you can say like this one simply so what is the use of this one now we can okay access okay, the list methods inside our program so list here in line number 16 okay so line number 16 is taking this list okay variable of type student analyst okay and we are accessing a method add because list okay error list have function okay built-in function okay? built-in method add so list dot add will take inside the object s1 this one so by doing so we can get all the information of the student op okay uh, object method so for example let's say uh, we are going for list dot add s1 so it will give okay the object student okay with the existing okay, parameters which is in uh, existing values actually of this those parameters this one so let's dot add s1 in line number 17 we are going for the second object okay? so let's dot add s2 in the third one we are going for list dot add s3 so these three objects s1 s2 s3 are added to the list the simple meaning is this one and list is okay, the student type error list simply so now we are going for running uh, uh, going for this program to run okay how for student okay, type so now here we are going for a student type for a student a student okay call it list the system will print now in line number 20 the list dot roll number okay, and then space and student uh, this uh, the list right dot name and the list dot age so let's run this program to see how does it work so I will just compile first okay, this program and it's successfully finished okay, that's okay let's see uh, thereafter what will happen so I will uh, go to the file analyst 22 this one right click and run the file 
now you will see we are getting all the objects with different okay values that are inserted by the user so the first object s1 is this one which is coming from okay, from here okay this is the for loop so it will repeat all the time that's okay so you can think from here or here that's okay no problem so the for loop will run one by one all the objects s1 s2 and s3 this way so the s1 will come first in the student okay, list so it will be 101 ali 23 the second okay object will have the values 102 mona 21 then the third object will return okay uh, these value 103 silent 25 so these three objects okay s1 s2 s3 generates okay return all these values for our okay, user defined type class object okay so this is all about this program so now we have learned how to okay utilize uh, our, the user defined classes and objects inside our program so this is all about this program very simple let's go to the program okay the program okay will uh, do something like this array of arrays okay so this is in your uh, lab member page number 19 arrays of array two dimensional array sometimes we say it as two dimensional array so let's see how does it apply so we'll finish this one that's okay and also we'll finish this one that's it okay. so this is the two-dimensional array program okay, this one so it is in the page on the page number 19 of your lab manual so I will explain okay, the program now so, so in this program okay we are creating arrays of array two dimensional array so usually you get arrays of like this one okay, if i can show you here okay like arrays okay like this one in the back end we have uh, some elements inside the array one two three four so this is simple array one dimensional array but if you are interested to go for array of arrays so it's it will look like this one uh, something like this one okay. so uh, you can think like so if you think about one dimensional array it will be like this one bracket okay a pair of one bracket single bracket but if you are going for arrays of array then it will look like the okay, combination of two pairs of array okay, like this one so we are creating here okay, arrays of array so let's see how does it work so this is very simple okay array class we are taking public class two arrays okay? 2d array actually so two dimensional array at line number six here we are okay defining the method main okay. in the main okay, method we are going for line number eight that is string type array okay. so if you can see here this is a combination of two array two okay dimensions the first dimension is here only one the second dimension is here okay, the second one so this kind of representation is indication that we are going to create a two-dimensional array with of string type okay and the name of the array the variable name is array string a r r s t r so we are instantiating a class of array okay using the string object uh, string class okay 
So this is the string class okay, here. So uh, type of the okay, class is also a string. Okay, that's okay. And we are creating a, an array of arrays of okay type string and the name of this array is array string. That's all. And what is the size? The size is three by four. So the first dimension will have three elements and the second dimension will have four elements. That's all. So okay, let's begin. In the line number, okay, uh, nine actually, okay, in the line number nine, we are using the for loop. So inside the for loop, we are starting with the i equal to zero. Okay, uh, running, okay, integer value which will run the for loop. Okay, it will repeat again and again. The i value will change, okay, by each and every repetition within the fun for loop. So first time, the program will run for for loop. I will be zero. Next time it will be one, then two and three and so on. So it will count the number of okay repetition. That's all. The next one is okay. Uh, this is the okay condition. The condition is I should be. It will repeat until I is less than array string dot length. So if let's say the length of array is like this one, if I can show you here. Uh, if the length of array is 1, 2, and 3, this means the length of array is how many items or objects, uh, how many uh, values are inside. So let's say in this case, it will be 1, 2, 3. So the length of the string, uh, length of the array will be 3. So in the same way, uh, there will be some length of the array always. So if the length of array is less than i, then the loop will continue from 0, 1, 2, 3. But if the length is more than, okay, uh, I mean length, uh, I mean uh, if i is actually, i is more than the length, then it will create problem. So it will stop before the whole length. So let's say if I have, we have the array of three elements, okay, one, two, three. So the array, okay, this for loop will run for i equal to zero for the first one, i equal to one, okay, for the second, uh, i equal to three, uh, over two, actually. So as you can remember, i is running from zero. So zero, one, two. So after i equal to two, I, I will not go for i equal to 3 because the length will okay be not available further. So the length is 3. So in that case, i 2 is less than 3 is okay. But 3 is less than 3 is not possible. So that's why the condition will fail and loop will end at that moment. So it will run until minus one length of the array because it is starting from zero that's why that's all so let's okay see the next one what is inside the for loop this for loop okay will have this condition and every time i plus plus so i will repeat the value the first time the value will be zero because it is post increment if you can remember this is a post increment okay i plus plus so this means i will okay begin from zero then it will go for one two and so on so here again okay, uh, this is the final okay third okay, component is the, in this for loop okay in the for loop we have another nested for so you can think like this one if i can Shape you like this way. That's all. So it is a nested for. Means inside this for loop, there's another for loop which is running in parallel. So 
let's say i equal to 0 okay it will run then it will go to the next loop this far and at the moment when i is equal to 0 another loop will run in the similar manner i j equal to 0 and the length remember the length is exactly the same okay? j is less than array string i here i every time is changing i equal to 0 so every time i will be 0 for complete completion of this loop so when array string i equal to 0 it will be okay uh, j equal to 0 as well so it, and this moment okay j will also increase so j will increase from 0 to 1 2 like this way okay so this is actually the second dimension of your array okay so let's see okay what is inside in line number 11 array string okay of if you can remember this is the name of the two dimensional array with the values i j which is coming from the repetition of the loop okay zero i equal to zero j equal to zero i equal to zero j equal to one i equal to 0 j equal to 2 and thereafter i equal to 1 j equal to 0 i equal to 1 j equal to 1 i equal to 1 j equal to 2 and so on so this is okay the two dimensional array creation statement at line number 11 and every time uh, the string equal to okay, uh, on the string notation will be printed and the value of j will be created, uh, printed every time. So it will be like j equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on. And here, okay, finally, uh, for this for loop, okay, we are printing array string, the same string uh, array of two dimension ij, okay, the values all this. And finally, uh, we will okay, go for just one space. That's all. So this is all about this two dimensional array so let's run this program so that you can understand better what's going on so now we got okay complete success and here okay uh, if i can see where is this this one right click and run this program that's okay so if you can see here now, we have okay, a string, this one, a string 1, a string 2, a string 3, the values of j, okay, j is 1, 2, 3, okay, uh, from starting from 0, okay, the first one is 0, 1, 2, 3, then the second time, okay, string 0, okay, right and then a string one two three okay, like this one okay and a string zero a string one a string two a string three okay like this way so this is a an example actually for the two dimensional array so that's all for today so i think this is the last okay example in the lab manual ah, there's one more okay 2d array uh, this is the last one okay so i will show you this one the last one so oh, this is actually not, no, not the same so 2d array and there's another okay if i have written somewhere to the array. I think the same one, no, not this one. So there's another okay program in your lab manual to the array. Oh exactly with the same name. That's why we have gotten the confusion. That's okay. So here okay uh, if you can see okay we can uh, we are just getting these string but uh, zero 
one, two, three, or just numeric numbers that are coming from IJ, IJ, sorry. So here, okay, now we are replacing with exact values of the array. So uh, if I can show you that one, wait a second. So that should be, uh, it's not there, I haven't read it. Okay, no problem, I would like just now so that you can see what's the difference. So I will just create a new okay, Java class having two dimensional okay, array. This okay this time? Two dimensional array. So that's all. Now it's, it's not available in our okay, source package, that's okay. And we'll finish up. So this is okay, uh, an example for two-dimensional array. So this time we are putting some values inside public uh, method actually, okay? the main method. So we are going for public method, public static, okay? if you can remember. So intelligence is not working static. A public static white name. Let's run this program. So it will definitely run by this way. By this one. That's okay. So okay, this is all about this one. So now we got a complete solution for this program. So array length foundation problem created uh, a little bit from the issue. But now we resolve the problem, that's all. So now we have these three values, okay? 20, 30, uh, this one, the first one. So every time J is giving the values. So this time, okay, it is running successfully because we are putting, okay, the I value inside the J. So now we have the first row, 20, 30, okay, this one, first row of the array. 2030. The second row is 1318. And the third row is 234561. The third one. So your array will be look like this one if I can show you a little bit in more compact way. It will be like this. So the first row, second row, and third row. So if you can see, now you can understand better. This is the one dimension and this is the second dimension so horizontally if you move horizontally it is the first dimension and the vertical one is the second dimension that's all so this is a, an example of okay, two dimensional array with values inside